event and during these times that we're going through right now it's very important that people understand the uh, importance of, being, of unity and getting together uh, safely at this point uh, wear your mask wear your mask distance just socially distance yourself and take care of each other that's the only way we're going to get through this so and saying we're doing it so we can keep bringing you this music every Martin Luther King holiday and so we can keep going on and the day's going to come when all this is going to pass and but we all got to do our part Say, you know, and like the message says, we got to stop the violence. You know, 2021 is going to be a lot different. It's going to be a lot different. Stop the violence, have peace, love, and unity in your community. What we want to say is, we love you. We love you, America. And we're going to work together and get it right. That's why we're going to keep replay. Prayer of unity, spiritual beats, a spiritual peace. That's true. Someone just said they can't hear you.
What a way to kick off the program. Thank you, AME. <laughs> Artistic <clears throat> Music Expression, which consists of Anthony, Mike, and Eric. And uh, they have been instrumental, no pun intended, in the success <laughs> and growth of this program for a very long time. Thank you for sharing your gifts with the world and fighting for peace and equality through music. My name is Anthony Peterson, and I'm blessed to serve as the Deputy CEO of OIC of Washington. <clears throat> co-chair of this event and the master of ceremonies this afternoon. Thank you for joining us in this momentous event. Before we continue, I'd like to remind everyone to keep your microphone muted if you are not presenting or speaking. And feel free to turn on your cameras. We'd love to see your face. But if, you, if your camera's on, be aware that we can see movement and activity. Now I would like to introduce you to Mr. Steve Mitchell, our Chief Executive Officer at OIC of Washington. And also he is a social justice advocate, educator and mentor who will deliver a welcoming statement. Mr. Mitchell. All right, thank you. It's a, just a short statement <clears throat> that I wrote up last night. And uh, I said, first and foremost, I would like to thank the people who helped put this program together. Uh, we have a tremendous group who are dedicated to improving our community. We are proud of the diverse group 
uh, and multiple perspectives that they bring to the activities and programs this year. One of our goals is to bring all people of every race and nationality together in harmony and peace. And we believe that all people are created equal and should be treated with dignity and respect. And then in the words of Martin Luther King, let freedom ring from every hamlet, let freedom ring from every mountainside. And with that, I'll turn it over to Anthony. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell, for right. those uh, great impactful words. And D2020 has brought forth tremendous trials with COVID and growing social, economic, and political divide incited by individuals in our na nation's leadership. But as Dr. King did and perhaps would do today, we must carry on despite unforeseen opposition and challenges. Amen. With that, with that said, we have a full program consisting of both pre-recorded and live presentations from community members across our county. We hope this presentation honors Dr. King's legacy, as well as showcasing the rich diversity and unity in our valley. Without further ado, let us continue. So at this time, I will welcome Pastor Willie F. Pride to lead the invocation. For over 40 years, Pastor Pride has served as an evangelist working in prison ministry, hospital ministry, and nursing homes, as well as leading his own church. Here is Pastor Pride. Were uh, we were up at the top of the for the drive? Uh, I said drive. A, it was really wonderful to see everyone gather together in their cars, and we went through the city of Top of the, I would say about an hour, just driving from one uh, neighborhood park to the other, and uh, just a blessing. So I just thank God just for the opportunity of coming together. Uh, at wherever we may be, even now, and even others that are meeting on other parts of the planet, I'm grateful to the Lord. But uh, for, for, for that, again, and saying that, uh, I, I want to just open up uh, with prayer at this right. And uh, can, uh, are, are you all hearing me? Uh, it's cutting in and out, Pastor Pride. Are you all hearing me? Uh, it, it's, it's breaking yeah, up, again. just going in and out. Oh, is it okay? Uh, but but I'll, okay, same way. So so I'll, I'll just con hey, Debbie. continue on uh, thanking you for all that you have done. And Lord God, we thank you for today, the day that has been uh, as a special day for Dr. King. Father, we thank you advance for uh, even in the year 2020. Lord God, there are certain things that I know and I understand that is right. And Father, I thank you that you're right now moving, you're guiding, you're directing, opening doors, you're giving my, ones a mindset, oh God, that's really different from what we had once a few years ago. Father, thank you for that. Now continue to bless us and bless this program. Oh God, as we go forward in you, man. Amen and amen. I'm going. Uh, uh, take my. I would just just for a few uh, seconds, if you would, uh, a few moments. I was going through the same the one that he preached that I have a dream, and I made uh, just a couple notes. From, just want to just share just a uh, just a little bit of that. He says, uh, in the "Sermon, I have a dream." What's paragraph of that sermon where it starts? But there is some. That I must say to on the warm threshold, which leads into the palace of justice. And in process of this, we must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. Let us seek 
to satisfy drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. We must forever construct or conduct ourselves of dignity and discipline. We must not allow ourselves to the distant heights of me with soul force. The marvelous new militant which has engulfed the new community must not be lost of all white people. For many of our white brothers, as evidenced by their presence here today, have come that their destiny is tied up with our destiny and their freedom is on to our freedom along. And then just that last little part of that paragraph at the end of the page of that sermon, pledge that we shall not march ahead. We cannot turn back. And those who are asking that will you be satisfied? We can never be satisfied as long as Negro is the victim of police brutality. We can never be satisfied as long as our bodies heavy with the fatigue of trudging in the motels, highways, and hotels of our cities. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro is from a smaller ghetto to a larger one. And I leave, leave off this that I am grateful to the Lord and I am, I, I'm not looking back, I'm going forward. And I pray thank God for that and mainly on his word, the promises of God. God bless you. I love you all. Again, we can say happy and truly it has been that. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Pride. And I'll be sure to get that text from you so that we can share it. Um, unfortunately, we were having some technical difficulties and we only heard part of um, those words. So we will share that. Next on our schedule, we have a presentation from Mr. and Miss Juneteenth 2020. They will be presenting the Pledge of Allegiance. So can I have that video pulled up, please? Thank you. Please join us in this. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you, Willow and Jackson. I'm excited to see them grow into leaders and ab advocates of justice and peace. Keep up the great work and to your parents and grandparents, thank you for um, leading them on the right path. So next we have a video presentation of the national anthem um, by local musician and artist, Mr. Mitch Weary, also known as M Status. Oh, say, can you see by the dark so bright, or so proudly we kneel at the twilight's last gleam? Whose broad stripes and bright stars do appear on a spine or the realm of sweethearts where so gallantly they sing.
So we want to thank Mitch M status um, and we see the work you were doing to empower young people to strive towards their dreams, despite all opposition. So thank you for that M status. And next on our agenda, we have the singing of the Negro national anthem, lift every voice and sing composed by Mr. James Weldon Johnson. Um, so at this point, I want to welcome the dynamic Reverend Carolyn Williamson of Mount Hope Baptist Church, who will sing the song. Oh, lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our resort sing, rise high as the listening skies. Let it Resound loud as a road and seed sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the Present has brought us facing the rising sun of a new day. Begun, let us march on till victory is one stony the road we try bitter the chest right felt in the days when hope unborn has died yet with a steady be have not a weird we see come to the place where with our father died we have come over a way that with tears has been watered and we have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered out from the gloom me path still now we stand at last. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. God of our weary years. God of our silent, silent tears, 
thou who has brought us thus far on, on our way, and thou who has by thy might led us to the light, keep us forever in the past. We pray, let's stop, feet stray from the places I got where we met thee. Let's stop hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget thee shadow beneath thine hand may we forever stand true to our God, true to our name. Oh, Jesus. Ooh. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. That gave me goosebumps. Uh, if that doesn't bring you to your knees in, 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 in humility and I don't know what can. Um, thank you again, Reverend, uh, for blessing us with that um, selection. And uh, those who are just joining in, uh, welcome to the 36th annual Martin Luther King celebration. We're doing things a little bit differently, but we are doing it and we are doing it well. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend. We will move on to the readings of the proclamations. One will be um, a video recorded by Mayor Patricia Byers. Um, that'll be the city proclamation. Following that, there will be uh, Trevor Green. Uh, Superintendent Trevor Green will read the Yakima School District proclamation. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Patricia Byers. And I had the honor of serving our beautiful city as council representative to District 3 and as mayor. Today we come together to celebrate the life, the accomplishments, and the ongoing dream of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. At our last city council meeting, we made the proclamation about today, and I'd like to share it with you now. City of Yakima Proclamation. Whereas Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. devoted his life to advancing equality, social justice, an opportunity for all and challenged all Americans to participate in the never ending work of building a more perfect union. And whereas Dr. King's teachings can continue to guide and inspire us in addressing challenges in our community. And the King Holiday and Service Act enacted in 1994 designated the King Holiday as a National Day of Volunteer Service. And whereas since 1994, Millions of Americans have been inspired by the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to serve their neighbors and communities on the King holiday. And serving on the King holiday is an appropriate way to, to honor Dr. King, meet local and national needs, bring our citizens together and strengthen our communities and the nation. And whereas the King Day of Service is the only federal holiday commemorated as a, as a national day of service, and offers an opportunity for Americans to give back to their communities on the holiday and make an ongoing commitment to service throughout the year. And whereas King Day of Service projects are being organized by a wide range of nonprofit and community organizations, educational institutions, public agencies, private businesses, and other organizations across the nation. And whereas each of us can and must contribute to making our communities better with increased opportunity for all citizens and citizens of Yakima, Washington have the opportunity to participate in the events throughout our city on the King Day of Service, January the 18th, 2021. Now, therefore, the Yakima City Council does hereby proclaim Martin Luther King Jr. holiday as a day of service and call upon the people of Yakima to, to pay tribute to the life and works of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. through participation in community projects 
on the Martin Luther King Day and throughout the year. David, this is the fifth day of January, 2021, Mayor Patricia Byers. So uh, Dr. King's uh, proclamation and his philosophy actually uh, promoted acts of kindness and service within our own community. And so many of us have done that uh, so well and consistently through this COVID crisis that we've all been experiencing together. So many thanks to all of you who have done anything to help anyone in any way during this very trying time. I'm grateful and I'm sure that, that everyone else is. Let me encourage you, please continue because we still have work to do. We're not through that yet. I'm also reminded that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s commitment was to peaceful protest against causes of injustice. The violence that has occurred across our nation this entire year is greatly distressing. I'm thankful for all of our community that we have not seen an exhibition of that kind of behavior here. We, you are blessed. We are blessed of God that we are a community of people who choose service, acts of kindness and service to one another for the good of our family, our friends, our neighbors, and any of those in our community in need. So thank you very much. Thank you for the time today. God bless you and God bless our beautiful community. We thank Mayor Byers for her work that she does to advance Martin Luther King's dream and the work that she does in our community. And uh, she wanted me to let you all know that uh, she is very sorry that she couldn't join us today live. Next, we have the reading of the Yakima School District Proclamation from Mr. Trevor Green. Thank you, Anthony. It is truly an honor to be here today to represent our Yakima School Board of Directors and the Greater Yakima School District membership at large in sharing this proclamation that was approved on the 11th of January of this year, a week ago. The Yakima Public Schools Proclamation for Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday, Power in the People, Freedom, Equality, and Prosperity, January 18th, 2021. Whereas January 18th, 2021 is the federal designated Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday. And whereas we observe the holiday as a day both to reflect on Dr. King's message of peace and to actively get involved in service to others, and whereas the students of the Yakima Public School District are actively involved in reflection, learning, and service in support of this theme, and whereas volunteers of all ages will join students through service projects that strengthen communities, empower individuals, and bridge, build bridges that help us look past differences and work toward a common good. Now, therefore, the Board of Directors of the Yakima Public Schools do hereby proclaim our support of this important work throughout our greater community dated this 11th day of January, 2021 by the Yakima School District Board of Directors, Martha Rice, President, Graciela Villanueva, Vice President, Raymond Navarro, Jr., Norm Walker, and Donald Davis, Jr., all members. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Green and your team at the Yakima School District. Thank you for ensuring um, equity and quality education for all individuals and families in the district. At this time, we have a presentation, several pre-recorded presentations. We'll start with the Na Native American dancers. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you for the Yakima Nation for putting together a video um, dedicated to Martin Luther King and uh, the uh, Yakima Nation as well as um, Indian tribes, Native American tribes across the nation um, continue in the work for civil rights. Um, so they are uh, instrumental and in, intrinsic in uh, the uh, fight for social justice. So we sincerely appreciate that selection. Next, we will have another presentation from um, AME, Artistic Music Expression. Thank you again, AME. I just wanna share a comment that uh, Miss Patricia Whitefoot made in the comments. She said, thank you for recognizing our Yakima Nation Swan Dancers. Uh, the Swan Dancers continue to do the important work at home, at the regional and national level. The, they appreciate this day as well. So thank you. Okay, next on our program, we have a message from Principal Maria Lucero of Martin Luther King um, Elementary School. She is the principal at Martin Luther King Elementary School. And then we'll have a photo montage. Uh, and the reason why this is important, not only is the school named after Martin Luther King, um, Martin Luther King Elementary uh, puts up a display every year in which uh, Reverend Trimble and Mr. Steve Mitchell would go to the school and um, uh, share stories of Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement. But due to COVID, we, uh, they were unable to do this work, but um, we wanted to uh, make sure that uh, the display was up and available um, for uh, teachers and parents and school and students that were coming in at a um, uh, staggered basis. We want to make sure that they were able to see that. So. Um, at this point, at this point in time, we'll have the uh, presentation from Maria Lucero. Hi, my name is Maria 
Next, we'll show the montage of, uh, that is um, up at Martin Luther King Junior Elementary School. All right. Thank you again, Mr. Mitchell and Reverend Trimble for setting that up at Martin Luther King Jr. Elementary School and, um, and making sure that the legacy continues. So we have three speakers today. Um, one speaker was able to um, do a pre-recorded video and uh, we'll show that video right now. And while our technician is getting that video ready, I'll share and I will introduce, sorry, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. At this point, we have a two minute pre-recording video of Chief Murray, the chief of police. And uh, I just wanna make mention since his tenure in Yakima, he has engaged in several community forums and has helped develop initiatives to dismantle perceived and actual bias in the police system. So here is Chief Murray. Hello, my name is Risha and I'm here with Chief Matt Murray of the Yakima Police Department and we're going to talk, a, have a conversation around MLK Day 2021. Question I had, if you could speak with Martin Luther King right now, what would you ask him? You know, that's a great question. I, I think I would ask if he's disappointed. I think I would ask him if, um, if this looks more like the dream he had or less. Uh, I think it's naive to believe that there isn't a problem still. I think it's insensitive to not listen and say, how do you feel about that and have an open heart to hear it. I also think that people have to understand that the process to get there, to understand this, this, this is an experience most white Americans have never even, they have no concept of what that means or what it's like or why you might call something that to them looks normal racism. So anyway, that's another, I think, really long answer, but you can see I am very introspective. I do spend a lot of time thinking about this. I also ask a lot of questions. Um, you have experiences that I'll never have and I'll never know. The best I can do is try to hear and with an open heart and go, okay, how do I put that in, in a place that, that I can be a better chief? I think the long answer though is this. I don't think police officers fully appreciate the impact that they have on people's lives. Just in the way you talk to people. Would you let the public know what the department usually does, remember the ribbons, and then I'll let that. Yeah, and we're going to do ribbons, um, and we're looking at getting magnetic ones so we can have okay. um, uh, those more permanent. Um, but I, I 
do have a long history with MLK Day in Denver. Unfortunately, the plan took that. I don't know if you know this. Oh, yeah. No. So Detective Campbell and I, I was kind of saying that we stood between the Klan and the oh, community. Yes. On MLK Day? Protecting the Klan, who had wow. a First Amendment right to protest, right? Uh, it was a mess. So it's become actually one of the largest parades in the country. You look at Ferguson, you look at uh, Kenosha, I mean, Milwaukee, I could go on and on and on. Right? And we've all seen it and we know and Milwaukee, uh, uh, Minnesota, right? Now, all these things. What's interesting to me is that there's an underlying rage, and I mean rage. And I think it's because we haven't been honest. I think we say things that we think people want to hear as leaders in our country. Uh, but, it, but then they look and go, well, this hasn't changed. There's nothing different about this. You just said it. And so then there's no trust. And so we have to have much more in-depth, honest conversations. And I would also say to all of you, and I mean this, I think you have to have grace and a willingness to forgive when somebody may say the wrong thing. Don't just attack, because they'll just shut them up. And then there won't be an honest conversation. And I think the two sides have to work at this continually with respect and, and forgiveness and a common goal and a desire to improve. Well, I will tell you, um, as a, a Black woman, um, after George Floyd's death, it was just so traumatic, um, even though I didn't know him, I didn't know his family, but I felt like they were, they could have been my family. And, um, and there was that culture that the other um, officers, they wanted to stop him, they even attempted to, but they were afraid of their, um, I think he was a trainer, was he a lieutenant, I believe, or anyway, but, um, that culture of if I speak up, I'm going to, uh, I'll get, you know, suffer the repercussions from my fellow officers. And so, here, here's a tease for our next podcast. Oh, yes. June 14th, 1994, when I turn two officers in for beating somebody up, and I'll tell you what happened next time Ooh. on the podcast. Yes, thank you so much. Thanks. All right. Well, for more of this interview, please go to the NAACP Yakima website, which will be in the description. Thank you so much, Chief Murray. We'll give you the um, oh, yeah. COVID, COVID. COVID bump. And we, we do have, a, we do have hand forever. sanitizer. But... <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Chief Murray, for being open to, uh, always open to interview and discuss the sensitive but necessary topics. And Risha, thank you for taking the lead on that interview. Um, and again, for if you want the extended interview, um, Risha has posted the link in the chat. All right, at this time, we have several student speakers um, that have recorded um, some videos to share their heart um, on the topic of Dr. Martin Luther King and uh, his impact in their life. So we We'll first have Daisy Trinidad go first because she goes to, from what I heard, is the uh, Superior High School in Yakima Davis High School. Is that true? Um, <laughs> I'll have Daisy Trinidad. Um, <laughs> all right, thank you. I was taught to respect myself and others, to stay humble, and to understand that others may have similar values or different values than me. I was taught to never give up, and no matter who or what gets in the way, to never let that stop me from becoming that role model I've always wanted to be to my younger siblings and to future generations. In addition to my morals and values, I've come to understand the rights and freedoms I am granted from living in the United States of America. These are rights and freedoms that my ancestors didn't have. There is so much meaning behind that word freedom. As an immigrant living in this country, I may not receive the same opportunities as an American citizen, but I have chosen to make the best of everything that comes my way. If this speech can make a difference to at least one person, then I am grateful for that, because I know it only takes one amazing person to make a difference for all. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. exemplified that leadership. So let's get together as a community and make a difference so that our children can grow up in a country where outcomes are not predicted based on the color of their skin. Let's build a community in which we celebrate the
the diversity we all bring toward making this country everything it was intended to be. I'm doing my part. Are you? Thank you. That was a great, succinct message from Daisy Trinidad. And uh, thank you for the call to action. She's really asking that question. Are you doing your part? Just think about that. Next, we have Mary Prentice, a senior um, and class president from Eisenhower High School. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. Martin Luther King Jr. My name is Mary Prentice, and I am senior class president at Eisenhower High School. Today is the day we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. and his influential leadership towards racial equality in this country. We remember a figure who spoke up and peacefully protested for needed civil rights a man who led our country, someone who helped change the United States for the better. As a student in the Yakima School District, I've learned so much, whether it be finding my passion for service, my love for leadership, or my stance to end racism. But learning from our past mistakes is one of the most important life lessons an education has taught me. January 18, 2021 is important because it not only reminds us of the importance of civil rights to our nation, it reveals the reality of today. The reality that 50 years later, the Black Lives Matter movement is just as prevalent and needed in our society. Today, we have equally tumultuous times. Today, we are not all created equal. Today, our country is divided. MLK Day is not just about remembering our past. It is a reminder of our future. Because yes, we celebrate MLK to honor Martin Luther King Jr.'s work, but it means nothing if we cannot learn from our past mistakes and continue to create a more tolerant society. I'm a senior who is advancing onto the next chapter of our life. And as I do, I take this Martin Luther King quote to heart. His words say, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. King's words resonate with me and remind me of the bigger picture. They help me work towards my goals to create a more accepting world. I am proud of our district's progression and I am honored to be a part of the Yakima School District's Equity Coalition, which is a step towards creating a more culturally responsive teaching and learning environment. As a 17-year-old girl, a minority in this country, and a student in this district, I look towards MLK and towards the future. But most importantly, I look towards you, administrators, teachers, students, parents, community members, as a part of the Yakima School District and Yakima community. We need to be a part of this change. This is not a fight that can be done alone. Like Martin Luther King Jr. said, we cannot become silent about things that matter. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Keep living by those principles. And as you go through your journey um, through out college and in your career. Um, and then I want you and Mary, or you and Daisy to come back and Make sure that you invest back into the school district. Make sure that you um, continue to lead um, the community in which you are a part of. So thank you again for those great words. So at this time, we have uh, three keynote speakers. Um, the first of them is Pastor Preston Jones. He has a pre-recorded video for us. I'm going to share a little bit about uh, Pastor Jones's background and uh, bio. So Preston Jones is a dynamic preacher and prophetic worshiper with a heart for this generation. He has traveled extensively through the Pacific Northwest, preaching, singing, and teaching the word of God. 
He was raised in Tacoma, Washington in the Pentecostal church, which is where his love of music and the word of God was developed. At the age of 17, Preston accepted the call to preach the gospel. In 2002, he met the love of his life, Becky Jones. Since then, Preston and Becky have been ministering together. Preston is known throughout this region for his prophetic worship and his unique ability to communicate the word of God. The Joneses have three boys, Moses, Micah, and Levi, and one girl, Ayla, Ayla Joy, all who are serving the church. Without further ado, Pastor Preston Jones. Hi, my name is Pastor Preston Jones. I'm the pastor of Redeemed City Church here in Yakima. I wanted to say thank you to the amazing team who facilitated putting together our Martin Luther King Day celebration. We know that usually we come together and we have a big, huge celebration, but because of coronavirus, we are not able to meet, but we are able to have this Zoom meeting and we are still able to celebrate. We must dismantle our perception of what faith truly is. Now, Jesus is not from the 13 original colonies, nor is faith. He's not a patriot. He's not a traitor. He's not Democrat. He's not Republican. He's not libertarian. He's not a socialist. He's not a communist. He simply is. John 1.3 in the Bible says all things were created by him. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. When I was a kid, we sang a song that simply said, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. As we move forward, like the song says, we can no longer cover our faith. We can no longer allow our faith or our light to be filtered through politics and social media platforms that constantly speak half-truths about God and who he really is. When Jesus came on the scene, people were looking for a Messiah who would deliver them from their Roman oppressors. Though we are not in those days, many of the scenarios remain parallel. We see the marginalization of minorities. We see oppression. Disproportions in the criminal justice systems are devastating for people of color, specifically Black men. We must understand that true faith supersedes all governmental authority. Now, the lens of our forefathers was tainted by racism. Because of the idea that one race is more superior than the other, that seed has been spread from generation to generation. It's seen everywhere, from segregated churches to how many of us vote. But when we understand who Christ really is, our faith changes. It changes from being a mere statement to a lifestyle. The true Jesus Christ came so that we could all be free, so that we could all be equal, so that we could all have a place at the table. If we continue to box him in to just another American Western idea, we will never achieve the greatness. As we celebrate Martin Luther King Day, let us review our actions and see if they measure to who he wants us to be. Let us remove all of the lampshades that dim our lights. Let us shine brightly so the world will see who he really is. Let faith shine brightly. Let freedom shine brightly. Let equity shine brightly so the whole world knows. Thank you guys. God bless you. Have a great day. Pastor Preston Jones, thank you for the reminder that faith supersedes policy and politics and everything. Thank you for that reminder. Next, we have Dr. Marcus Pimpleton, who serves as the Executive Director for Equity, 
partnership and student engagement at the Yakima School District. I'm gonna share a little bit about Marcus Pimpleton. Dr. Marcus Pimpleton is an award-winning teacher and instructional leader committed to ensuring that all students receive an exemplary education that prepares them for success in college, career, community, and life. He presently serves as the executive director with the Yakima School District. Prior to that, he served two years as a principal of Quincy High School and as a superintendent intern in the Quincy School District. As a co-facilitator of the Quincy School District's Access Opportunity and Equity Coalition, Dr. Pimpleton was instrumental in facilitating much of the racial equity professional development for the diverse coalitions of stakeholders that wrote the Quincy School District's race and equity policy. The end result was a board adoption of one of the strongest worded racial equity policies in the state, one that applies the University of Washington's leadership for learning, L4L, leadership standards to the unique context of Quincy. At this time, I want to welcome Dr. Marcus Pimpleton. Good afternoon. Thank you to the organizers of today's event for the opportunity to share a few remarks. I know I was invited here particularly because of my new role with the Yakima School District, but at my heart, I'm really just a church boy trying to help make the world a better place for young people to grow into adulthood. So I will be drawing as much from my church roots as my educational lens. It's unfortunate in many ways how limited a view we give school children of the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. By all means, it is worth noting his insistence that nonviolence was the only way forward. And by all means, it is worth noting that a major theme of his speeches, particularly his most famous I Have a Dream speech, was a picture of a nation where children of all colors and backgrounds could live, learn, play, and work together. Nevertheless, we shortchange ourselves and his legacy when we limit the conversation to only about kindness and integration. The struggle King championed was a struggle for more than just integrated schools, lunch counters, and buses. It was a struggle for justice, for equal and equitable access to the American dream, for the humane treatment of marginalized people all over the world. It was a struggle for workers' rights, a struggle against police brutality, against militarization, and against the inaction of white moderates. It was a call for an America that lived up to the aspirations so beautifully encapsulated in the preamble to our nation's constitution, a more perfect union where justice, domestic tranquility, the general welfare and blessings of liberty are established, promoted and secured for all. It is a vision that some 50 years after the death of its most visible drum major still seems in many ways as out of reach as ever before. By nearly every measure in housing, wealth gaps, health disparities, criminal justice and education, our black, indigenous and other people of color are on so many levels still under the boots of a political, economic and social structure designed to maintain us in a second class status. Our nation appears more polarized than at any time in its history. Less than two weeks ago, we literally witnessed a siege at the US Capitol, the symbol of what has been claimed to be the greatest democracy that ever existed. And just over two months ago, 75 million Americans the second highest number of votes for a single candidate in American history went to support the continuation of the tone and trajectory we have been on this last four years. Any mention of the inequalities faced in our education and criminal justice systems has been labeled by some as un-American propaganda. At the same time, Dr. King enjoys a favorability rating somewhere between 80 and 90%. We have become a people where folks have learned to honor the man with their lips even as their hearts are far from him. What do we say on the commemoration of Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday when these are the times in which we live? In revisiting some of the speeches of Dr. King, I was reminded that one of the main reasons for his commitment to nonviolence was that he was keenly concerned about reconciliation after the struggle for justice had been won. He knew securing equal rights, fair housing, worker protections, would not be enough if the people in the new integrated nation were so full of anger and hatred about the means used to secure those things that the necessary healing and reconciliation couldn't move forward. 
It is hard to love someone you just witnessed destroy your property and even worse, do physical harm to your family and friends. If the struggle were ever to be won, we'd need a path to live together as neighbors afterwards. It is a sentiment rooted in King's Christian faith, and that is really the crux of what I want to talk to you about this afternoon. Today, we live largely in integrated neighborhoods and attend integrated schools. We have clearly won the right to live as neighbors, but when will we step into our responsibility to live like neighbors? In the book of Mark, Jesus is recorded responding to one of the teachers of law of his day, answering the question, of all the commandments, which is the most important? Jesus responds in part, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. It sounds simple on its surface because so many of us have come to understand love as simply being the absence of hate. But the challenge Jesus was presenting takes a deeper commitment than that. Love is not simply the absence of hate. When we truly love, we have a desire to know, to be in fellowship and to pursue the best interests of another, even when it requires our own discomfort or sacrifice. This is why scripture also tells us, if anyone says I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. There is an intimate interchange between seeing, knowing, and loving. If I can't see you for who you are, and I would argue that includes your color, if I can't tolerate the possibility that your life experiences may have presented you with a different understanding of the world than mine, if I can't invest the energy to really know you, to empathize with you, to enter into a relationship with you, how can I possibly love you? Dr. King's ministry of nonviolence was rooted in the recognition that the realization of his dream would require not merely that people tolerated one another's presence, but that they could hear and learn from one another's experiences and perspectives. He once said, people fail to get along because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because they have not communicated with each other. It's time to stop disputing whether black lives matter, all lives matter, blue lives matter, and to let the love we profess for one another inspire us to sit down, black, white, brown, Asian, indigenous, to have the difficult conversations about how we are consciously or unconsciously conspiring with the system that in too many ways sends the message that some lives matter less. And if it is to have any sustainability or efficacy, these conversations must begin in our schools led by educators who have done the difficult work of unpacking their own identities and biases. We need a culture of genuine empathy. Much of the work I do in school centers on helping people reflect and to listen on issues dealing with social justice and race. What if we committed ourselves to talking less and listening more, to allow ourselves to hear directly from those who may have a different background from our own and to truly listen with the intent to not to respond, not to argue, but to learn and to understand. What if we cared less about having our voices and opinions heard and more about learning from the voices and actual lived experiences of others? And what if we use that learning to truly empathize and to ask how can we make the world a better place for people who for far too long have ended up with the short end of the stick? Our nation is at a crossroads, yet as difficult as things may feel, Power is indeed in the people. We have the tools we need to bring the dream of Dr. King and his generation to a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Marcus Pimpleton. Let us always remember to talk less and listen more and lead with love. Thank you for those words. At this time, I would like to introduce our last keynote speaker. Um, many people know her throughout the valley. She's going, she's usually playing in your uh, radio airwave. Um, she is the newly elected president of the Yakima County NAACP. She's also a Girl Scout mom. She's a radio programmer, digital content creator, morning host um, at Town Square Media. Um, she has a lot of experience in her service work, um, ranging from uh, being the uh, previous uh, board member at the um, Yak Yakima uh, branch, um, YWCA, as well as committee, as a committee, excuse me, um, <clears throat> board member of the Yakima Schools Foundation. She's a membership and life membership and communications chair um, 
she served as the life uh, as the communications chair as at the Yakima not, uh, NAACP, and she served on various other boards and committees throughout Yakima County. At this point, I would like to welcome Miss Risha Cosby as the third and final keynote speaker. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for having me here today to speak to you. Dr. King once said, out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope. In the 1960s, Dr. King beseeched America to make it a better place for all people. And yes, we have come far, but not far enough. We have not reached the mountaintop yet. In the year 2020, the entire world saw the death of George Floyd right in front of our eyes, on our TVs, on our computers, on our cell phones. After seeing that, it was like an awakening to many people of all races in this country. Now here we are in the year 2021. And I dare say that America is finally ready to have that tough conversation about equity and equality. Our nation must now fix the inequalities in this world of money, power, and justice. We the people must demand equality and equity for everyone. Some of us have come from generations of trauma. We have been wounded, taken for granted, turned into second-class citizens, and we have been underestimated. It is not for lack of trying. Some of us have had our native lands stolen away from us. Some of us have had generations of our families devastated. Let us acknowledge the first peoples of this land. We have such a long way to go for America to reach racial, gender, and judicial equity, but we must not give up. It is so easy to want to throw in the towel, or as Tyree says, throw in the towel. It's so easy to want to do that. We cannot give up. Yes, we will make some big mistakes, and we endeavor to do things right. We will make these huge mistakes in our personal lives. I have made many failures, many lapses in my judgment, and I've had some humiliating setbacks, but I did not give up. I cannot give up and you cannot give up and you cannot let that represent everything that you are. And I will not let that represent everything that I am. So nor should the people in America, the people in Yakima, we should not give up. We are freedom. We are prosperity. We are equality. We are our ancestors' dreams. Let me end with a message of hope and a call to action. Get off your behind and start inspiring others. Do you know why? Because iron sharpens iron. So you sharpen one person and then another person sharpens you. Surround yourself with positive people, with positive energy who will inspire you who will encourage you and motivate you to do the hard work now so that we can leave a legacy of prosperity for our kids, our grandkids, and the generations that come behind us and the generation existing today. Let us do our best to set examples for our children. Let us rescue Mother Earth, as I like to call her, because father time is coming and our climate is changing. We need to do something about it now while we still have time. As a friend on my Facebook page said today, her name is Elise Wakefield Cardenas. I hope I said it right. She made a comment on one of my posts. Dr. King did stand for peace, but he also stood for tough, uncomfortable debate and confronting issues and creating change. That is something that you would have thought was written in a book somewhere. She needs to put that in a book. That is why when someone tells you or tries to tell you to shut up and turn the other cheek and accept verbal and mental abuse and inequalities, you tell them no, you do have that right. We live in a country where we have that right. You speak up, you say the truth. We must also give homage on this day and respect to Coretta Scott King who has been left out of a lot of conversations but who definitely needs to be recognized today. Without Coretta Scott King and her support for Dr. King, there would be no Dr. King. And finally, today's theme is power in the people, freedom, equality, and prosperity. There can be none of these things if we don't start getting our stuff together as a community, 
and as a nation. So Yakima, get your stuff together. Thank you. Thank you, Risha, for that powerful message. I also want to restate your bio because I chopped it up and I didn't give credit to, um, to you and the work that you've done. So I will restate that before we move on. So you don't have Risha to pride herself on being a Girl Scout mom. She's a radio programmer, digital content creator, morning host with Town Square Media, um, KFFM FM Yakima. KMGW FM Yakima, Washington as well. She is a junior league Yakima sustainer, community board member, board president, member of the National Association of Black Journalists, NABJ, and the Society of Professional Journalists and the National Press Club. She, she as I mentioned in, at the onset, she is the new president of the NAACP, and she's the ex officio, officio um, president of the board at the YWCA Yakima. And she's a board member of the Yakima Schools Foundation. Again, Risha, thank you for all the work that you do in the community. So next, we have the presentation of the Spirit of the Dream Award. Um, Ms. Sharon Harris, is going to, her family was awarded this award last year. So she's gonna speak a little bit to the award and um, a little bit of its history and the impact that it's had in her family. Um, Ms. Harris is a member of the prominent Harris family that has been committed to social justice by way of education, business, real estate, and advocacy. Five members of the family received the Spirit of the Dream Award last year. Ms. Harris, who is also a part of the MLK committee, will share some words about the award. Then Adrian Garner, director of the Henry Beauchamp Center and um, community advocate across the county will introduce the awardees. So at this time, I introduce Ms. Sharon Harris. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the Harris family, I would like to express our sincere appreciation for the MLK Committee for recognition through receiving the Spirit of the Dream Award 2020. We were honored and humbled to be acknowledged for serving the Yakima Valley through our professions and our community service. Um, it is always rewarding to be validated for the work that we love to do. We, the Harris family, are committed to keeping Dr. King's dream alive through our service. Again, we thank you and God bless you. God bless each of us. Thank you. At this time, Adrian, will you come on and present the awardees? Uh, Anthony, I'm just gonna skip back just a little bit uh, to talk about the Lee Pageant Food Drive, if that's okay. Uh, yes, we thank you. Are, we, uh, as you all know, we've done the Lee Pageant Food Drive throughout the school district uh, for over 30 years. And uh, this year, we were determined that it was going to continue even through um, the pandemic. And so a special thank you to uh, Mr. McDaniel and Mr. Diner, both principals of Ike and Davis for ensuring that this happens. The food drive will go through the 22nd offices. So if you have extra food to donate, all the food will go to Northwest Harvest. We are collecting that in this manner this year and on the plaque for 2021, uh, it will note that the awardee is the Yakima School District. So the award goes to this year, the entire Yakima School District and the plaque will be held in the superintendent's office this year. I will move along to the awardees. Just one moment. Just so many powerful words that were said today. Um, as we bring up the pre-recorded um, uh, notes or um, comments of Mr. Eric Lee or Eric Silvers, excuse me, I'm so sorry, Eric Silvers. I'm going to remind us of what Dr. Pimple 
open said to us, and I'm going to come back to that, but I wanted to start with that because we really, uh, you'll, you'll understand why the committee, the MLK committee chose the awardees when we uh, get finished. I am honored to be able to receive the Spirit of the Dream Award. I'd like to first thank the committee and also I'd like to thank my Yakima downtown Rotary for helping me accomplish a goal to get a new playground and picnic shelter at the Martin Luther King Park here in Yakima, where for generations my family and friends played, swam, went to school across the street. This is fantastic. The partnership of building this uh, was not just for the Yakima Downtown Rotary, but it was also the Yakima Rotary Trust, Southwest Rotary, and Sunrise Rotary, besides getting a grant from the District 5060. We're not finished yet. We have lighting and park benches that are ready to be installed. This spring, we hope to be able to have a celebration. Leaving a legacy is so important in our community. It is important that we all work together to make this community better. Being voted the first person of color to be the president of the Yakima Downtown Rotary is a great honor. But what you do before, what you do during, and what you do after will last. Thank you for the Spirit of the Dream Award. I'm not finished yet, and neither should you be. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Silvers. The awardees will accept their awards in the following order. And so we'll unmute um, after the next awardee. The next one will be Blaine and Preciosis Tamaki Foundation. Following that, Yakima El Censo, Yakima Valley Community Foundation, Yakima County Health Department and Yakima Valley Memorial Hospital. Thank you for the recognition. We believe in the dream of Martin Luther King Jr. and we founded our foundation to pursue his dream. We are so honored. Thank you very much to the committee. I served on the OIC board decades ago when Henry Beauchamp was executive director and Adrian Garner's dad, Percy, was the chair. Uh, we love OIC and what it contributes to the community. Uh, we'd like to thank our executive director, Brianna Tamaki, who is here today. And also uh, Sharon Miracle, Eric Silvers, and Dulce Gutierrez, who were part of our advisory committee. So thank you so much. So at this time, we'll continue with the Yakima, Yakima El Senso awardees. Good afternoon. Ignash Winixa Kutonkan. My English name is Matthew Tamaskin. And I served about 20 years ago on the Yakima Nation Tribal Council. Um, and I, I'm honored, as we all are, at the Yakima Yakima Census Program. This, this effort uh, it, uh, to count people of color started about two years ago, and uh, we were honored to attend the initial meeting at the Henry Beauchamp Building with the Yakima Community Foundation and some other organizers uh, from Seattle, the Seattle area. And from there, we have decided to move forward in creating a complete count committee here in the, the upper and lower Yakima Valley because we were hearing that the um, 
current administration, which will be ending here tomorrow or, 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 or on Wednesday, was making deep cuts to the Department of Commerce and the census. And uh, we knew um, we, if that took place, it would really affect people of color being counted. So we, we formed this coalition of people of color. And uh, I'm, I'm also honored that uh, our partners were uh, NAACP, Faith Action Network, uh, League of Women Voters, um, and and uh, those are just some that I can recall. And uh, we, we, we had a, um, we started off meeting every other month. Then as the sense as 2020 came, became coming closer, we, we decided to meet every month. And then uh, soon after that, uh, we started meeting every two weeks. And then when we um, started experiencing this pandemic, we were meeting via Zoom. And you know, we 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 did our outreach. We did our best to get everybody counted. Uh, and um, unfortunately, the the issue that we kept running into was the federal government kept uh, moving the target. So in our meetings, we had to also adjust our target in in making sure that everybody was counted. Um, unfortunately, here on the Yakima Reservation, we do have a lot of homeless people. And um, the, the census had decided, rather than going out and um, counting all of our homeless people, they just, they just did a rough estimation. So um, our numbers are going to be very low for the Yakima Nation. And uh, we were disappointed, you know, in the effort by the census uh, not to count everybody and we we you know a, a, as much uh, difficulty at, that we were having not only with the the local census but you know even with the regional census and uh, one of the issue well one one of the things that i'm proud of is to have uh, been appointed to serve on the washington state complete count committee with the uh, Governor Gary Locke as the chair, and we met quarterly, and uh, you know we 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 uh, lobbied for funding from the legislature, and we unfortunately didn't get our target funding level, so we had to work with what we got. And I'd like to commend um, a lot of people that uh, tried pushing through legislation, because right now what we're working on. Our, our, our three main principles were um, census, elections, and redistricting. And that's something very important that we all need to keep in mind. Um, uh, 10 years ago, in 2011, the uh, redistricting commission um, was unfortunately all of the dominant society members. And uh, they, they had failed when they came to Yakima, they had failed to set up um, ESL services. So um, they, they basically, I, you know, I would have been embarrassed, but they um, put all of the non-English speakers into a corner and uh, had somebody who volunteered to interpret. So that was a reflection of um, their lack of knowledge of what the state is. So this past, you know, this, this, Past fall, we did push for an independent uh, redistricting, uh, redistricting commission. So that's our effort. Uh, I would really like to thank you uh, in honoring us. Uh, we, we tried our best and we're still working on uh, redistricting. And uh, on behalf of the Yakima, Yakima Census Coalition, uh, Census Complete Count Committee, we appreciate you in recognizing us in our efforts. Have a good day. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Yakima Community Found Valley Community Foundation uh, President and CEO Sharon Harris or S Sharon Miracle. Too many Sharons. <laughs> Good afternoon. Well, it's definitely an honor to be recognized here today, um, our organization. 
and as we celebrate Reverend King and his dream of a nation uh, without racial inequities. The Yakima Valley Community Foundation, your community foundation, exists to bring together people, resources, and ideas so everyone in our community can thrive, regardless of their neighborhood, skin color, gender, or other factors. We recognize and understand our community's deep strengths and its many, many disparities. And we acknowledge too our privilege of being in a position of bringing together substantial resources. Thankfully, those resources and the many gifts of time and talent and, and um, money uh, allowed us to respond quickly and substantially to address the hardships the pandemic brought throughout our entire community. We knew our efforts needed to address inequities and to assist first and foremost, the marginalized members of our own community, those who were under-resourced and challenged even prior to it. Like Reverend King, we believe all people should have equitable access to opportunity. And we know when equity is addressed, our community will be stronger economically, healthier, physically and emotionally, and better prepared educationally to meet the challenges we all face. I really thank you today for including us in this celebration. It's been an honor to be alongside so many of you, assisting in your work and doing what we can. Uh, thanks, Risha, for calling upon us uh, and calling upon all of us, I mean. It is our role and responsibility. Uh, we are truly grateful and humble today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Sharon. Next, we will hear from the Yakima County Health District. Uh, Director Andre Fresco. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to thank you for having us uh, join you today. And it's a privilege to be uh, honored in this way. Uh, I accept this on behalf of the staff at the Health District and also all of our partners who have been working so diligently on behalf of the community. This has been a community effort. This hasn't been about any one organization. It's been about all of us in together uh, caring for one another. And I'm reminded today uh, on the uh, important day honoring a hero of mine that the heroes we serve are everyday folks who overcome struggle because the struggle is real. And we've seen that in our country. We've seen that in our valley. We've seen inequity. We've seen racism. We've seen people who have had obstacles and who have gone hungry. And uh, I feel privileged to get up every day and serve those uh, who deserve to be honored. Uh, it really is about us working together. And if we truly believe that we are all our brothers and sisters keeper, we must work together to, uh, to leave the world a better place. That is our goal every day. That is our commitment every day. And uh, again, it's an honor to, uh, to be recognized, but the honor truly is to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. And next we will hear from the CEO, Carol Pete from Yakima Valley Memorial Hospital. Oh, thank you, uh, Adrian, for, for that introduction. And, and thank you, MLK Committee, also for this Spirit of the Dream Award. Um, 2020 certainly was a challenging year uh, for all of us, but particularly in healthcare. And um, assuring that there was equal access um, to all populations as we really um, managed and led through uh, a once in a lifetime pandemic uh, really was the mission of every single healthcare worker um, across the organization and in our partnerships across the community. Um, so thank you for recognizing the healthcare workforce um, both at Yakima Valley Memorial and I would say across um, all of our communities uh, for the work that they have done over the past year to really make sure that um, regardless of who individuals were, what their ethnic background was, what their health background was, that everyone had access and care uh, during a very, very challenging time. And those challenging times continue and it takes all of us working together to help um, really lift our community out of um, this pandemic and looking forward. So thank you all for everything that you do every day. Um, it's all important work that none of us can do alone. Um, it really does uh, take a village of all of us 
together um, leading our community forward and creating a healthy community, um, both physically and uh, mentally and emotionally. So thank you. Thank you, Carol. As we close out, I just wanna leave um, one thought with you. Carol eloquently said that we need to do this together. And I think that that's been the message throughout. The youth have told us, what are we gonna do next? They wanna help. Uh, but one of the reasons the committee is because they provided a, a unparalleled response to taking care of this valley. We were uh, with a new administrator at the hospital. We were down one hospital. There was not enough money to go around to provide families with emergency services. And so that financial leg uh, from those awardees to date infused our com community with many needs overall. But you stepped up, you didn't ask questions. And like what was said earlier, you just, listened and responded in love. So thank you to the MLK Junior Spirit of the Dream awardees. Thank you, we appreciate you. And we all need to, like the kids said, what are we gonna do next? We need to keep the dream alive. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian, for presenting our awardees and thank you awardees for being with us today. So um, before Reverend Trimble closes us out, um, I want to recognize several key members of the committee, um, including um, the people who really put this together um, that are in the background. Um, I, I just wanna give a special um, shout out to Ernestina Ortiz He's running the Zoom right now. Thank you, Ernestina. Um, Risha Cosby for the video work. Thank you. Nelly Muir, um, Adrian Garner, and also our co-chairs, Mr. James Parks and Mr. Steve Hill and uh, Mr. Steve Mitchell. And then we wanna thank our um, sponsors who are represented on our flyers, the NAACP, Casey Family Programs, Yakima School District, Northwest Harvest, uh, uh, Domex, OIC of Washington, Engravings Unlimited, United, the United Ministerial, Ministerial Alliance, um, the City of Yakima, uh, KIT, YWCA, Twount Town Square Media, and everyone, thank you so much for your work. So with that being said, I will, and, and one person I will also wanna uh, recognize is Miss Esther Huey, who checks in with me periodically to make sure that we're getting the work done in the community. So thank you so much, Miss Huey. With that said, I would like to also thank and pass over um, the, the mic to Mr. Reverend Trimble, who need the man who needs no introduction in the work when it comes to Martin Luther King. Thank you so much, Reverend Trimble. And I appreciate the time you let me have with you to, um, to educate me on the history of uh, Martin Luther King in our community. And one thing I want to add um, in my spending time with Reverend Trimble, he told me uh, why he named Martin Luther King Boulevard Boulevard instead of a street or avenue, um, not because of the definition of Boulevard, but because the prestige that goes behind the name Boulevard, it, it sounds more prestigious and it needed a name that stood above the rest, just like Dr. King's message and dream. So thank you, Reverend Trimble for blessing me with the time to spend with you. And I'll let you close us out, sir. Um, Yes, thank you very much. Appreciate uh, being in, in the program and still on the battlefield. I would just like to say that, uh, that uh, Martin Luther King was one of my role models. And what I liked about him is that he 
He lived by principles and that guided him. He was a family man who loved his mother, who was also killed or assassinated in the uh, civil rights movement after his death. She was at the piano playing that Sunday morning, uh, the Lord's Prayer, and she was gunned down. He lived by principles, as I said. Uh, he lived by three principles. He loved God, he loved himself, and he loved others. He committed his whole life to those principles. That's why he was able to, to, uh, to endure the criticism and all of the uh, rejection that came upon him during the last year of his life. But through it all, he maintained his philosophy of nonviolence. And he would say in the process and in the movement, because of that, because of his commitment to nonviolence, because of his love for not only Americans, but all peoples of the world, he was able to change the course of history without even finding not one bullet. He didn't even own a gun, he didn't even own a pocket knife because he was committed to his philosophy of nonviolence. And so at the end of each rally, at the end of church services that we had in the, move, in the movement, we were able to go forward because he inspired the civil rights movement with a, a little song that was very simple. And we sung it at the end of every rally every church service. We sung it when we was tired. We sung it when we were faced with uh, police brutality, when they sick the dogs on us, we sung it. It was the song of the movement and we should never forget it. We got a lot of work to do our hope should be in God and in the principles that guides us in life. So I would just like to say uh, to all of you, thanks for continuing on with the celebration of Dr. King. Uh, Steve and I are getting old. <laughs> 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 we're happy that we can see that we're uh, and others are coming up that can carry on uh, the dream that Dr. King had in his book. Where do we go from here? He states his beloved community. He didn't have a, he didn't have a, a hate bone in anybody. I don't think. He wanted to see us see America and the world be one. That we love each other, we care for each other. As, as, as the young people say, I got your back. We need to continue to keep, keep each other's back. And so as we close this uh, celebration, let us close with the Give a right anthem, we shall overcome. Dr. King theme song of this movement is a powerful song. You can go anywhere in the world today where there is struggle, and you will find this song, and you will still see people in the streets marching and singing it. It is our gift to the world. The world can struggle. We want to ask you to stand up and cross your right hand over left and sing with us, we shall overcome. We shall
Feel free to sing it. Unmute yourself. <laughs> King Day. All right. Happy King Day. God bless everyone. God bless you. Happy King Day. God bless. Happy King Day. Amen. Happy King Day. Happy King Day. God bless all. Thank you, all the committee. Happy King Day, everybody. <laughs> I'm thinking the coverage isn't all that, but it's definitely an important day.